After a long hiatus, Riverdale has finally come back, and let me tell you, they came back with something. We just finished up the season four plot twist reveal that turned out to be barely anything. But you know, maybe that's just what we deserve for watching this show, you know what I mean? Now just to summarize what happened last time, Jughead is dead and then just kidding, no he's not. Okay, we're all caught up. And so once again, let's take a walk. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. Now it's 2020 and pretty much everyone knows what a VPN is. It protects you when you're on the internet, it stops your IP address from being hacked and your personal data getting exposed. I mean, everybody needs one. But Surfshark VPN goes above and beyond your typical VPN. You can use it on as many devices as you want with just one subscription. They also offer HackLock ID protection that checks to see if your personal data has been leaked anywhere, like usernames, passwords, that kind of thing, so you can stay one step ahead. They also offer a service called Blind Search, which is a completely private and organic search engine free from data tracking and overreaching algorithms. And get this, you can sign up to Surfshark VPN today by going to surfshark.deals slash alexmyers and use the promo code alexmyers to get 83% off the regular price when you sign up for a two-year subscription. That means you get premium VPN services and a guaranteed peace of mind using any device or all of them at the same time for just $1.99 a month plus one extra month for free. So if you don't have a VPN, then you really need to sign up. But even if you already have one, go to surfshark.deal slash alexmyers and use the promo code alexmyers to give Surfshark a try. Okay, back to the show. We start right off with Jughead sitting in Doily's underground bunker, which has somehow become like a main character in this show, furiously writing on his typewriter because that's just the kind of guy he is. The weirdest thing about pretending to be dead is that after a while, you actually start feeling like you're dead. Oh, trust me, Jughead, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Way ahead of you on that one. I mean, I'm laughing right now, but on the inside, it's just a black hole vortex. So Jughead is still pretending to be dead to figure out what the Stonewall kids are really up to and why they tried to bonk him on the head and all that. But this was a different kind of mystery than the ones we tackled before. This wasn't a who done it. This was a why done it. I needed to get under my suspect's skin, inside their heads. The missing Stonewall 4, the accidental deaths of DuPont's classmates, my attempted murder. How were they all connected? And while he's doing this, everyone else is trying to sell the story that he's gone, which includes Archie and Betty pretending to be together, mm-hmm. Also, Jughead's dad, Archie's mom, Charles, pretty much everyone else is involved at this point. Like, this is the worst kept secret of all time. But then, after several months, apparently, of keeping up the charade, whatever that means, it's finally time to get to the bottom of things. Crime and Punishment. A novel of murder and its psychological toll. Floor is open. Any thoughts regarding Dostoevsky's take on morality? Hey, guys. Surprise! So this whole episode is basically just Jughead and Betty locking all the Stonewall kids in their classroom and walking us through all the evidence that's been sprinkled out throughout the season about like Jughead, his grandfather, Mr. Chipping, Mr. DuPont, just everything all together. Same year, the same month as Chipping was awarded his contract, a Stonewall student disappeared. One of the so-called Stonewall Four. This student was murdered by Mr. Chipping. Ryan Allen, the previous ghostwriter who took up the mantle the same month another one of the Stonewall Four disappeared. It's actually incredibly simple. So just to summarize what's going on here, every time a new ghostwriter is picked for the Baxter Brothers books, they have to devise and carry out the perfect murder and not get caught to prove that they actually like know what they're writing about. And over the years, these victims have been known as the Stonewall Four. Moose was apparently supposed to be the fifth one, but Mr. Chipping helped him escape and so now Jughead kind of like took his place. And since he was digging into the truth about everything anyway, it seemed like a win for everybody. Now for those of you who might remember way back at the beginning of this season, I made my own little hypothesis about how this is all gonna play out. This guy is actually some homeless dude that was paid to act like Jughead's grandfather, and their real grandfather is working together with this other guy to pull the strings in the shadows or whatever. And turns out, everything that's happened so far in the last three seasons of Riverdale is actually just the story of the final book in the series. Or maybe it's just time-traveling alien shapeshifters, you know, I mean, whatever. To be fair, I was kind of right, although I probably gave the writers a little too much credit for how they were gonna tie it all together. But either way, I'm just gonna give myself a sticker that says, you're the man now, dog, cause I'm a winner. And also the big secret about how Jughead survived in the forest that night was actually just like a little whoopsie-daisy. It all should have worked so perfectly, but it didn't. Because in all your plotting, all of your lurid conspiring and your brilliance, you didn't kill me. I mean, whose job was it to check my pulse? Jonathan. Oh, you Einsteins, all you had to do was hit me in the back of the head hard enough with the rock. Although, to be fair, I guess that's actually kind of realistic. So Jughead and Betty continue explaining everything. I'm not going to cover every little detail, but you get the idea. And then we get another big reveal when Jughead's grandpa walks in the room. Hello, Francis. Why don't you tell him what you told us, Grandpa? Wiesel came to see me before he died. He told me that you killed Charles and Jane. 
Because they were going to spill the truth of the damn Baxter brothers. That's right, everybody. Would you believe the guy who looked and acted like a bad guy? Well, turns out he was a bad guy. Look at you, Riverdale, being all clever like that. But right before Charles can arrest him, he jumps out the window a la Mr. Chipping, and there you go. After this is all over, at the very end of the episode, Betty goes to see Donna one more time, and we get the last little piece of the puzzle about how Donna was actually the one behind everything the whole time. You would believe I would mastermind some elaborate conspiracy that caused the deaths of multiple people just to win a YA book contract? You would do it for revenge. Revenge for what? Your grandmother, Jane Dallas Brown. One of the classmates DuPont killed to cover up the ugly truth that he didn't create the Baxter Brothers. And so this pretty much concludes the whole Stonewall prep, Jughead might be dead, haha, <laughs> just kidding, though he's not, storyline that's taken up most of the season, and I think Cheryl kind of summarizes everything pretty well. No one ever really dies in Riverdale. Do they? I love how at this point, even the writers of the show were just like, uh... Huh. But you know, compared to the Wattpad fan fiction that was season 2 and 3, the big mystery this season in and of itself was actually not that bad. Like, it was pretty grounded and actually made sense, more or less. Although, coming off of the Black Hood and the Gargoyle King, like, having the villain be a guy who writes books was just kinda whatever. But still, now that the mystery's over, I gotta wonder where the show could possibly go from here. But at its heart, Riverdale was, and is, a wicked little town. So no one was surprised when a third round of sinister videotapes was delivered to our doorsteps. You know the sun. Oh, they're singing again. <laughs> Now, something you need to know, because obviously you're just totally invested in the story, is that people have been getting these video cassette tapes of someone recording the outside of their houses. But nothing ever really came of it, so I didn't bother mentioning it till now. And this scene here is the third time this has happened. Which is actually really impressive if you think about it, because, like, where would you even find VHS tapes and record them in 2019 slash 2020? Like, really, doing all this would take so much effort nowadays. So anyway, moving on, as per usual, Kevin's heading up the musical slash variety show, or whatever it is this year, and he wants to do the musical Hedwig and the Angry Inch. But as we all know, the new principal, Mr. Honey, really hates it when kids are happy and like having fun or whatever, so you can probably guess how it goes. Why don't you do a number from a classic musical like Oklahoma or Carousel? It celebrates identities, genders, expressions of all kinds, and it speaks to my entire generation. We're people, not numbers. We're Generation Z. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay, somebody please turn this off. Now, with the previous two times they've done musical episodes, I said how Kevin is by far the best musical theater singer in the show, but he never gets enough solo time. But this time around, he's just front and center through the whole thing, so good for you, Kevin. But that being said, not a whole lot really happens in this episode as far as moving the story along. Veronica's dad's condition is getting worse, and because Jughead was in a bunker for so long and Archie was trying to be like Batman or whatever, both of them need to buckle down and get their grades up or else they won't be able to graduate. We figured out a way for you to catch up on all of your classes. Whew, that's not daunting at all. There's an index. Mm -hmm. And it's color-coded. Given how far behind I am on literally every topic, is it even worth trying to catch up at this point? It's only for a couple of months, just to make sure that you graduate. But the climax of the episode is when Jughead is too busy investigating the VHS tapes and doesn't really want to study anymore, mixed with Veronica's dad not going to the doctor and instead going to Archie's gym. So eventually the truth comes out and both couples start fighting and arguing and throwing random things on the floor because I guess it kind of goes with a Hedwig song. And ultimately, this leads to... <sighs> You know, every time this happens between Archie and Betty, it always goes like this. Something bad happened to me. Something bad happened to me too. Well, you know what that means. <laughs> now at the very end of the episode, Jughead is watching the tapes again and he sees whatever the heck this is supposed to be. So that's cool. Now because of recent events, season four is being cut short from 22 episodes down to 19. So that means there's only two episodes left. And hopefully whatever storylines they were going to do will somehow be worked into season five because like unless something really just over the top happens in the last two episodes, I have no idea what season 5 could possibly even be.
Riverdale ending early is kind of a bummer just because it's like, I mean, thankfully they sort of wrapped up the whole like Jughead storyline, but I feel like, you know, they were kind of building towards a little bit something else kind of going on. But the fact that they have three episodes less, you know, it's like they're not going to be able to finish up really anything. There's a whole lot of loose threads that I'm assuming they're just going to leave open because like, how could you possibly wrap that up? And then, you know, with season five, I guess the, the theory was that they were gonna skip ahead in time to match with the Katie Keene universe. Cause if, if you're not watching Katie Keene, then first of all, I don't blame you. But second of all, um, you know, Katie Keene is like a certain number of years in the future from Riverdale. I feel like if there's so many threads being left open, then that's probably not gonna end up working out too well. Maybe, it, maybe it'll be like one of those like mid season things where like the first half of season five, they try to wrap up all this stuff with like you know uh Hiram Lodge and Hermione Lodge because I remember hearing the news that FP and Hermione the 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 actors are going to leave the show this season I don't know how they're going to do it um this whole current situation has kind of messed everything up and so you know at, at least they got that musical episode in there huh but anyway thank you so much for watching everybody don't forget to subscribe don't forget to ring that bell so I don't miss any videos from me follow me on Twitter let me know what's your favorite part of the video or or what video I should do next or just say hi whatever that's fine too follow Charlie on Instagram Charlie meets pumpkin Charlie has a TikTok now Charlie underscore mom it's in the description below and above all else everybody have a great day and I'll see you all next time